In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Our Father, we thank you very much tonight. We bless your name for calling us together again. Thank you because of what you have for us in your word. Thank you for the provision you've made for us that the power of the Holy Spirit is available to everyone. For you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. You have assured us that you love us so much. If our fathers, being evil, know how to give good gifts to their children, how much more will a Father who is in heaven give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him? Lord, we want to do your work. The challenge is out there on the field. We want you to make us, raise us up like Elijah's, like Elisha's, like Peter's, like Paul's, like effective men of God and women of God so we can do exploits for the Lord in the times and the day in the period in which we live. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Help us to receive from you tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And everybody said, Amen. We thank the name of the Lord for the way he has led us thus far. Already you know that every night we've been dealing with this series on Elijah and Elisha. And we have already had the first message, the minister, the man, Elijah. And then we have had the ministry and the mission of Elijah. Today we are looking at the message and the miracles that came through Elijah. And tomorrow, by the grace of God, by the grace of God, I hope you'll be here. I hope you'll be here. We're going to be talking about something. But you know, the story of Elijah and Elisha, many people that do not understand the watch of God, you do not understand the test of perseverance that comes upon you because the power of the Holy Ghost is not that cheap. The power for ministry and for mission in this end time is not that cheap that, you know, you just come like that and just get it. See, as the mantle, the mantle of power was to come upon Elisha. See the delay. See the perseverance. See the testing. And Elijah said, wait here is a test. And your leader can bring tests your way to show whether you have the metal, whether you have the material within to be able to claim, to be able to have, to be able to possess, to be able to manifest the power resident in the mantle. Oh, he didn't give, he didn't even tell him the timetable. He didn't even tell him that, you know, I, I'm going away. He never spoke a word. It's the onlookers, the observers that said, do you know the Lord is going to take your master from your head today? He said, I know it hold your peace. I'm not for talking now. I'm looking for something. Are you looking for something? And you know, it will surprise you. It will surprise you that me, standing here before you, I'm looking for something. I am still looking for something. That I might know him. And the power of his resurrection. Not that I had already obtained or attained, but I press forward to the mark of that goal, forgetting the things behind and reaching forth so that you come to that point. I come to that point where I'm filled with the fullness of God. 
And he was looking for something. If you're looking for something, there's going to be a test that will examine, evaluate your perseverance. And then Elijah said, Elisha, wait here. You, you ought to be tired by now. Wait here. I don't want you to go through all this long journey. Wait here. I don't even know the timetable. We might get over now to Jericho, and the Lord might send me to another place. Wait here. A test is coming your way. And all that you are seeing, everything you are looking at here, is a test. And then they got to Jericho. Elisha, why are you so persistent? What's the problem with you? Are you not tired by now? Wait here. The Lord has sent me to Jordan. In these last days, the people that are going to have the power to do exploits for the Lord will go through the test. And there will be that perseverance that you manifest. And then they got to Jordan. And he had not even asked him to pray, to ask, to seek, to demand what he wanted. And he crossed over. And when he crossed over, Elisha ran after him. The beauty, the glory of two people being together for years. And familiarity will not bring contempt. You know, the more you know about a leader, a mentor, if you are not careful, the less you receive. Elisha, tell me, don't you remember the time that Elijah, this great man of God, was running away from Jezebel and he was praying, God, kill me. Don't you remember this, your leader, this, your mentor, when he was so weak and he was praying that he wanted to die? Ah, Elisha said, don't talk about that. He's my leader. I block that from my mind. I'm looking for something. If you are not looking for anything. Oh, yes, he knew. He knew his history. He knew when he was running away from Jezebel. He knew when he was saying, it's enough now. I'm not better than any of my fathers. But he refused to think about it. The beauty and the glory of Elijah and Elisha moving together. And Elisha being so close to Elijah. And yet will not remember that other part. And he just kept on. I don't like to talk about my family, but I thank the Lord. And you young people there that have not married, pray before you get married. I'm telling you something. When I preach, my wife takes notes. She comes to the first retreat. And after listening to the message, she'll rush by cassette. She's my wife. She's heard me many times. Then I come to the second retreat, preaching the same message. And then when I preach it to her, it looks different. And she rushes and she bites the cassette. And then I come to the third retreat. She knows me. She knows when I sleep too much. She knows when I drink bombita too much. She knows how lean I was when she married me and how she has fed me and fed me and fed me and then I'm big. She knows, but when she comes for the third retreat and I preach that third retreat, she runs, she buys the cassette. In fact, sometimes when I want to listen to some of the messages I preached in the past, before I ask the live tapes, I ask her, do you have this particular cassette? And sure enough, she'll say, wait for me. She'll go and bring it up because she listens to them. And, and we're married. 
And she knows me in and out. The beauty of an Elisha following after Elijah. And there will be no familiarity that brings contempt. And then they crossed over Jordan. And then Elijah said, ask what you want now. Ah, you are just asking me now. You wasted my time all this time. That's familiarity. That's contempt. He said, what I need, what I want, I want a double portion of your spirit upon me. And Elijah didn't say, you have tried, you have endured, you have persevered. Get it? Elijah said, that's a hard thing. Okay, if you see me, when I'm taking up, it will be done. If not, forget it. And Elisha then focused attention on him. That's for tomorrow. Wait till tomorrow. <laughs> Tonight, the message and the miracles through Elijah. This man, Elijah, I pray the spirit of Elijah. The power of Elijah will come upon your life in, in Jesus' name. In 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. In verse 37. Hear me now. Hear me, O Lord. Hear me that these people may know that thou art the Lord God. And that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, he is God. The Lord, he is God. Here you have both the message and the miracle. Because he came to the people, he spoke to them. He threw a challenge to them. How is it between two opinions? How are you halting between two opinions? If God, the God of heaven, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, if he be the real God, the true God, the eternal God, the covenant-keeping God, serve him. Then, if on the other hand, Jezebel come in from the Gentile nation, marrying unto Ahab an Israelite, and their unequal yoke has produced false religion, and has brought Baal to be the God of the land. If Baal is the one you want to serve, then declare, serve him. This Elijah was a man sent by God to turn many, many hearts heavenward. As God's servant, God's prophet, he proclaimed his word. Not only that he proclaimed his word, he performed his wonders. Message miracle word wonder salmon signs going together he preached the message from god and then he demonstrated convincing miracles listen to this messages convict miracles convince messages when you preach you have a word from the Lord. It brings conviction in the hearts of the people. And while they're still wondering, while they're wavering, while they're wondering whether to what to decide, a miracle comes along. 
and nails it with a hammer. Confirms it. Miracles convince to reach the mind, reach the heart, touch and turn the soul. Both message and miracles are necessary. To lead many to faith in Christ, true ministers of God ought to pray that as we preach the word of truth, this truth that God has given us, that God at the same time will continue to confirm the word of signs following. In Mark chapter 16, Mark chapter 16, reading from verse 20, and he went forth and preached everywhere. The Lord walking with them and confirming the word with signs following. You see both there, there are messages there. They went everywhere preaching the word. Preaching, preaching, preaching. That's the message. Then the miracle to confirm the Lord walking with them. Walking with them. Confirming the word with signs following. In James... Chapter 5. James chapter 5. Verse 17 and verse 18. Elias, Elijah, was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth. By the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again. And the heaven gave rain. And he hath brought forth a fruit. You will see then in the ministry of Elijah. These two things that he may judge on. The message. The miracles. The three parts to the message tonight. Number one, messages from uncompromising prophets. And Elijah was one of them. Uncompromising prophets. And Elisha was one of them. Uncompromising prophets. And Daniel was one of them. Uncompromising prophets. And Jeremiah was one of them. Uncompromising prophets. How about Isaiah? Uncompromising prophets. How about Micah? Uncompromising prophets. How about Micaiah? Uncompromising prophets. How about Paul the Apostle? Uncompromising prophets. Messages from uncompromising prophets. Number two, miracles through unlimited power. Miracles through unlimited power. Number three, mercy for unqualified people. Mercy. Hey, look at the miracles that God did through Elijah. You'll see it's mercy for unqualified people. Hey, look at the miracles that God wrought through Elisha. Mercy for unqualified people. Come to the ministry of Jesus Christ. The leper, the blind, the maim, and the, those who are paralytic, and those who are demon-possessed. Mercy for unqualified people. Come back to number one. Messages for uncompromise, uh, from uncompromising prophets. In 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 17. 1 Kings 18, 17. And it came to pass when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said unto him, Art thou he that troubleth Israel? And he said, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house, in that ye are forsaking the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed barely. Show me the preacher today that can confront 
a president, a governor, a chief, a king, highly placed people in the community that will tell them about the corruption in the land that they are responsible about the evil in the land that they are responsible. Show me the preachers today. All these publicities that people are making, and they invite this, and they invite this, and we see photographs in the newspapers that, you know, this highly placed man was there, the governor was there, the chief was there, uh, the minister of this uh, ministry in the government was there, this member of the cabinet was there, this senator was there. What do they tell them? Do they tell them the uncompromising message of the living God? And we who are here in our retreats, we who are overseers, and we, who, we who are leaders and pastors in whatever capacity, and you see what the other churches are doing, and then you want to invite this and invite this, and if the governor of your state, you know, you know, you know, everything happening. You know that they need salvation. They need to be born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You know, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. You know their sins. You read in the papers. You hear from everybody. You know what is going on. And when they come to your church, and it's politics, they, they want you so that in the next time of election, you as a pastor, since they have come to your church, so that you'll be able to talk to your members, to vote for them, that's the reason. And then before they go, they call you, they say, Pastor, you know, this is your church, we love your church, we like your church. You tell me, do you preach that day when they come? Don't you hand over the pulpit to them completely? Don't you allow them to talk their politics over the pulpit? Do you talk about sin? If the governor of your state came suddenly to your church and they just told you the governor has come, if you had prepared a message on repentance, on restitution, on righteousness, on holiness without which no man shall see the Lord, and you hear that governor came to your church that very day, don't you change the message, not Elijah. Messages from uncompromising prophets. When he met Elijah, Elijah that's Ahab, Ahab said, ah, ah, Elijah, you locked up heaven. There was no rain. And we're all suffering. You are the one troubling Israel. And Elijah gave him the message he needed. He said, me troubling Israel. Ahab. He looked at him. Two eyes looking at two eyes. Eyeball to eyeball. Face to face. Without cringing. Without cowardice. Without timidity. Without fear. Pointing at him. And said, you are your father's house. You are the one troubling Israel because you are forsaking the commandments of the Lord. And you have gone to serve Baalim. Show me then the preachers here. Show me the preachers, Pentecostal preachers in our country here. Or in any country in Africa where they can tell the truth like this. Listen to me. There is a reason why. I'm not interested in special, special, special programs for highly placed people. Because those highly placed people, you won't be able to talk to them. That's why I prefer. I prefer for them to be in the congregation that I don't know. You know, you've invited them. Don't come and tell me when I'm going to preach. Don't come and tell me, sir, honorable so-and-so is here. Jesus will be honored. And Jesus in the church, in the church, in the church, in the church, Jesus is the honorable. Don't come and tell me. Honorable so and so is here. So and so is here. So and so is here. I'm not interested in that. 
in our second retreat here, somebody came from the top in our country. Another person also came. The state overseer had reached into me before he came. He said, sir, so and so is coming to the retreat. He, wa he wants to leave the retreat in the state. He doesn't want to attend that one because he's so great. He's so mighty. And he counted the retreat in the state so low that how can he go? He wants to go to the one at the headquarters. I said, let him come. And he came on the first day. And the camp commandant told me that so and so is here. Hi. I said, give him accommodation. And the church secretary came to tell me the second day and said, he wants to leave. He just wants to see you now so that he can be prayed for. I said, go back and tell him. I see people at the end of the retreat. If he is so much in a hurry, let him go back to his stage. When he really wants to see me, then he will come back. And I told the church secretary, I said, I'm doing that so that if he really is serious about wanting to see me for prayer, he'll wait until the end of the retreat. If he doesn't want to wait, tell him. That's our policy here. And he went to tell him. He said, I'll wait. You know, if you don't know who you are serving, and if you don't know what you stand for, you'll not be able to declare the word of God uncompromisingly. And we preach the word. And two of them, at the end of the retreat, they saw me one by one. One of them, he told me, he said, my people want me to still campaign in the coming election. Then he said, Sir, you know, this one I am in now. Before I got there, I took chicken and all that to all these people, herbalists. He said, Now, I've attended this retreat. I've had the word. My people want me to get in again. But this time, I will not take any chicken to anybody. If I am going to get in, I will get in clean and clear by the power of prayer. He got something. You know, if you don't declare the word of God, and when the people come, all you are doing is this and that, look up at me here. I know some of you, you don't understand. You may not like what what the pastor is deciding. If you like everything I do, I'm not a leader. A leader has to be able to take some hard, hard, hard decisions based on the word of God. I'm telling you that as a church, I don't appreciate programs that we just call these people together. And then, when we call them together, even our own members will be shutting up our mouths and will be saying, please, pastor. When it is in-house preaching, within us, we understand, but please, pastor, be gentle. <laughs> These people, don't drive them away. That's exactly what I want to do. I want to drive them away. I want to drive them away. I don't want anybody high up there that will keep their two or three wives and be a member of our church and we cannot talk because they are high. I want to drive them away. I don't want anybody still smoking and drinking. But because it's very high, we cannot talk. We cannot preach. We cannot say the truth. And they want to be members of our church. I'm going to drive them away. I don't want anyone that will steal the money of the government and give money to this church and build churches for deeper life. We're stolen money 
and we know it. And we cannot tell them about transitution because they are high. I want to drive them away. We want this church. Uh -uh. The early church. You see your calling, brethren. How that not many noble, not many mighty, not many wise, according to the flesh, are called. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound them that are mighty. That's what we want to do. We want to remain uncompromising in the preaching of the word of God. Do you see how Elijah did it? If you want to be a man like Elijah, a minister like Elijah, you will have messages that will show that you are not a compromiser. You are not a jellyfish without a backbone. In chapter 21, chapter 21, 1 Kings, from verse 17, the, the thing here is that Ahab and Jezebel are taking Naboth's vineyard. And in verse 17, and the watch of the Lord came to Elijah, the Tishbite, saying, Arise, go down to meet Ahab, king of Israel, which is in Samaria. Behold, he is in the vineyard of Naboth whither he is gone down to possess it. And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus says the Lord, Hast thou killed, and also taken possession? And thou shalt speak unto him, saying, Thus says the Lord, In the place where dogs leech the blood of neighbors, Shall dogs lick thy blood, even thine? Ah, that's prophecy. Do you know how many people prophesy in this our nation at the end of the year? How many Pentecostal preachers, charismatic preachers prophesy? What do they prophesy? Hey, they, don't, they don't want to say anything they think is negative. They just want to make everybody happy and become popular. Not Elijah. Messages from uncompromising prophets. God wants us to be uncompromising. And this is what we have to tell him. And then, and Ahab said in verse 20, he have said to Elijah, Hast thou found me, O mine enemy? Oh, Elijah knew that he have counted him as an enemy. And yet that did not disturb him from preaching what he ought to preach. And he answered, Yes, you call me your enemy. That's all right. I have found thee. And he answered, I have found thee. I saw you. I detected your evil. I know you are still a sinner. And you are staying up there. You are killing. You are destroying. Listen. Then he said, Because thou hast sold thyself to walk evil in the sight of the Lord. Behold, I will bring evil upon thee. And take and will take away thy posterity. I will cut off from Ahab him that pisseth against the wall and him that is shut up and left in Israel and will make thine house like the house of Jeroboam the son of Nebat like the house of Beasha the son of Ahijah for the provocation wherewith thou hast provoked me to anger and made Israel to sin. And of Jezebel, I have a message for her too. Also, speak the Lord, saying, The dog shall eat Jezebel by the word of Jezreel. Are there people that can still tell the truth? Are there people that can be faithful to their calling? 
Are there people that will know what Jesus Christ has said and they will be able to declare the word of the Lord? If you want the power of Elijah, if you want the ministry of Elijah, the ministry of Elijah carries a great responsibility. It means that you are going to be able to declare the word of the Lord without fear, without favor. Well, you don't go out your way to them, out of your way to them. If God has not sent you to them, leave them. Let others who can preach to them, preach to them. God sent Elijah to Ahab. That's direct. If God has not sent you to them, be praying for them. But if they come to your church by themselves, and you are not looking for their money, and you are not looking for their donation, and you are not looking for land, and you are not looking for property, and you are not looking for any gift from anybody, if they come on their own, the word you ought to preach, don't preach, don't, don't mention them, don't use their name, don't, 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 be, don't be direct, just, just preach the word you would have preached even if they were not there. That's the point I'm making to you. So that you will have a clear conscience that by the grace of God, you are declaring the word of the Lord. And you are not competing with other churches. You are not saying that other church has these highly placed people. And because he has the highly placed people, that man will be attracting many people to the church. Don't compete with them. Do you know the kind of people they are attracting to the church? Do you know how the standards are falling? Because of those people they are attracting to the church, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their itching ears, they will heave to themselves teachers. But you. Do the work of an evangelist. Endure afflictions. Make full proof of your ministry. This is the time. In 2 Kings chapter 1. 2 Kings chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 1. Then Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. And Ahaziah fell down through a lattice. In his upper chamber that was in Samaria and was sick. And he sent messengers and said to them, Go inquire of Akron, Akron, whether that's the God, uh, go inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Akron, whether I shall recover of this disease. And the angel of the Lord said to Elijah, the Tishbite, God is always giving this man difficult assignment. Difficult assignment. Why do you have a problem with me? Why are you blaming me? Why are you opposing me? It's because God gives me assignment. He may not give you the assignment. He gives me he may not give those other people the assignment. He gives me. And I enjoy it. And I love it. Contending earnestly for the faith once delivered unto the saints. He gave me the assignment. He always gave Elijah a difficult assignment. Oh yes, there were other prophets there in the land. But the Lord just picked on Elijah every time. Elijah every time. Elijah every time. And some of the people, you know, they want to ask me, hey, why is it your messages are not motivational? Why is it your messages? Don't worry. That's the assignment he gave me. 
And that's the assignment he gave this church. He always chose Elijah and he gave him the assignment. And he carried it out. You will carry yours out. I said you will carry yours out. Ah, and you think you we can just study Elijah for nothing? You think we can just study Elijah and laugh? You think you can study the life and the ministry of the prophet of fire and be laughing? Elijah, he was a special minister, special assignment. And here we are. The Lord said, go and tell him. The angel, I'm reading verse 3 again. The angel of the Lord said to Elijah, the Tishbite, arise. Go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria. And say unto them, is it not because there is not a God in Israel? That ye go to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ekron. Now therefore thus says the Lord, thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up, but shalt surely die. And Elijah departed. And when the messengers turned back unto him, he said unto them, why are ye now turned back? And they said unto him, There came a man up to meet us, and said unto us, Go turn again unto the king that sent you, and say unto him, Thus says the Lord, Is it not because there is not a God in Israel that thou sendest to inquire of, of Beelzebub, the God of Akron? Therefore thou shalt not come down from that bed on which thou art gone up but shall surely die and he said unto them what manner of man was he so bold so courageous so audacious which came to meet you and they told the, and told you these words and they said he was an airy man and got with a girdle of leather about his loins but we don't know his name he said yes i know him i know there's no other person like that he said it is elijah british fight. i pray they will know you <laughs> that when those people hear when they hear the message when they hear the word without even any label on that case when, when they hear they will say this one this is deeper life this is deeper life is that bad i said is that bad no it's good you know they didn't know his name and so the man said i know i know the only person it can be that's elijah and then he said go and catch him go, go, go and bring him here and then Elijah, some things happened. But look at verse 15. And the angel of the Lord said unto Elijah, Go down with him. Be not afraid of him. And he rose, and he went down with, with him unto the king. And he said unto him, Thus says the Lord, For as much as thou hast sent messengers to inquire of Beelzebub, the god of Ekron, is it not because there is no God in Israel to inquire of his word? Therefore, thou shalt not come down off that bed on which thou art gone up, for thou shalt surely die. He repeated it again. I pray God will give us in this church ministers, preachers, that will stand on the truth, the word of God. I will not be dilly dallying, changing amphibians, no backbone, no conviction. And when they see rich people, they see people with Mercedes Benz, or people that maybe own aeroplanes, or people that own whatever, then they cannot remember once again that except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. They don't remember anymore. That God is no respecter of persons. That without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. Yes, there are times when we preach messages of love, motivational messages, encouraging messages. But the preacher is like a doctor. There are times when bitter pills and unwanted medicine are the only cure for some deadly diseases 
and the mark of a good doctor is to administer such medicine when it is necessary. Go and ask the people that have gone through the treatment of cancer. Oh, the doctor doesn't like to cut off the important part of the body, doesn't enjoy it, but he has to do it. And go and ask the therapy they subject them to, to save their lives. Inconvenient. It's not all right like that. It's, it's not easy. But the doctors, they still have to do that. Go and ask people that the doctor said they should not put salt in their food anymore. It's not easy, but the doctor sometimes, he has to recommend that. Go and ask people that the doctor will say, you have been taking too much sugar. Don't put sugar in any drink anymore. Anything that has sugar, leave it. And just be drinking tea ordinarily. It's bitter. That's what you need. The doctors don't like to do that. But when it becomes necessary to save their lives, they recommend that. And there are times when a preacher will know that from the time of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of God suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. And they have to turn away from their sin. And they have to repent of their sins. True ministers of God do not only preach what people want to hear, they preach what will convict sinners to turn away from their sins that will lead them to repentance. And because Elijah was a faithful preacher, preaching uncompromising messages. That's the reason why God blessed him with miracles in his ministry. Point number two, miracles through unlimited power. It, look at the ministry of this man. It's just miracle after miracle after miracle. In chapter 17, 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter 17, Reading from verse 8, 1 Kings 17, 8, And the watch of the Lord came unto him, saying, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose, and he went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, it, the widow woman was there gathering of sticks and he called to her and said fetch me I pray thee a little water in a vessel that I may drink and as she was going to fetch it he called to her and said bring me I pray thee a morsel of bread in thine hand and she said as the Lord thy God liveth I have not a cake but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise and behold I'm gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die and Elijah said unto her fear not go and do as thou hast said but make me there a little cake first and bring it to me and after make for thee and for thy son for thus says the Lord God of Israel the barrel of meal shall not waste neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth and she went and did according to the saying of Elijah and she and he and her son a house did eat many days and a barrel of meal wasted not neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord which is spake by Elijah miracle through the unlimited power of God you know the miracle that followed that in verse 17 it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman the mistress of the house fell sick and his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him and eventually Elijah knew about it and then in verse 22 the Lord heard the voice of Elijah and the soul of the child came into him again and he revived he raised that dead child uh, do you see when, when you are keeping faithful 
to the word of the Lord. And you are preaching that word faithfully. And you are not targeting anybody. You are not attacking anybody. It is just that this is the word of the Lord. And you are faithful to that. And you preach it uncompromisingly. Then the miracle power of the Lord will, will follow after your ministry. In, in chapter 18. Verse 30. Chapter 18, verse 30. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones, according to the number of the tribes of the son of Jacob, of the sons of Jacob, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar, as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order, and cut the bullock in pieces. And he laid him on the wood, and said, Fill four barrels with water, and pour each on the burnt sacrifice, and on the wood. And he said, do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran round about the altar. And he filled the trench also with water. And it came to pass. At the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that Elijah, the prophet, came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, I seek, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their hearts back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell. Amen. amen. Give me a good amen. amen. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the bond sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the doors and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord is God. The Lord, he is God. Now you see that the unlimited power of the Lord produced miracle in his ministry. God always equips his ministers to accomplish the ministry he has appointed them to fulfill. And while you are here during this congress, the Lord is appointing you to his ministry. The hand of the Lord will be upon you. But please, anywhere he sends you, don't look at the faces of people. Don't look at the faces of people. Declare the word. Declare the truth. And the signs will follow your ministry. Don't you know, God has unlimited power. He has unlimited wisdom. He has unlimited grace. He has unlimited strength. He has unlimited authority. He has unlimited gifts. Listen. We can have, each of us can have enough power from his unlimited power. Each of us can have unlimited wisdom from his, can, can have enough wisdom from his unlimited wisdom. Each of us can have enough grace for every situation from his unlimited grace. Each of us can have enough strength from his unlimited strength. And each of us can have enough authority from his unlimited authority. Do we need gifts of the Spirit? He's unlimited in the supply. Each of us can have enough gifts from his unlimited gifts. God supplied all that Elijah needed. The courage he needed, the courage you need, the Lord will supply. The faith you need, the Lord will supply. The power you need, the Lord will supply. He supplied everything that Elijah needed for an effective ministry. Through him, God wrought different kinds of miracles as the need 
arrows. Elijah did not limit himself to only one kind of miracles. And don't you see the diversity, the variety of the miracles that God performed through Elijah? As the need arose, different needs, different times, different kinds of miracles necessary, the power of the Holy Ghost in him was not limited. Even today, God's power is available for you. The gifts of the Spirit are available for you. And it's unlimited. Uh, you know why we experience limited miracle? Oh, because of our limited faith. Because of our limited consecration. Because of our limited commitment. It's we that limit the flow of the power of the Lord into our lives. Today, you'll take that limit away. And the unlimited power of God will flow into your life in Jesus' name. Point number three, mercy for unqualified people. As we look at the miracles that the Lord did in the ministry of Elijah, the miracles of mercy. In fact, uh, the people that received the miracles, sometimes they themselves testified that they were unworthy. Hey, look at First Kings again from chapter 17, verse 18. Hey, that's the woman she was staying with, the widow woman, whose son had died. 17, 18. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? Of course she knew she was unworthy. And then Elijah said, give me the child. And she got the child. And then he prayed. And God raised that child from the dead. Miracle of mercy for an unqualified person. And in the ministry of Elisha, isn't that the same thing we find? Mercy for unqualified people. In 2 Kings chapter 5. 2 Kings chapter 5. Look at it from verse 1. Now, Naaman, the captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. And he was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel a little maid. And stressed, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maid, that is, of the land of Israel. And the king of Samaria said, Go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. He thought that the power was flowing from king to king, from king to captain. He didn't know. Uh, the, 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 uh, the, the maid mentioned the prophet. I will send a letter to the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver and six thousand pieces of gold and ten changes of raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of, of Israel, saying, Now, when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have there we sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass, when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he rent, he tore his clothes, and he said, Am I God to kill and to make alive? That this man does send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy. Wherefore, consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. And it was so. When Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me. And he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses, big man, and with his chariot, 
wealthy man. And stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go, wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. How do you like that? Elisha, uh, don't you listen to advice from your supporters and those who are around you? This is a big man from another country. How can you just stay inside your prayer room and, and send a message to big man? I'm telling you, Elisha learned something from Elijah. If there is anything that causes concern and sorrow in my heart, it is that some of the Elishas that ought to follow the example of this Elijah here, standing before you tonight, they say, no, we cannot follow him. We cannot adopt his message. We cannot preach the way he's preaching. We cannot be firm like his firm. We cannot treat those big men like he's treating the big men. We cannot order, control things in our church like he's doing. We don't know the kind of personality he has. He never listens to something. He wants to continue the ministry in the 24th century as it was in 1975. We cannot follow this man. That's the problem. And that is why the flow and the transfer of the mighty power of God is not getting into some lives because the Lord knows that inside our hearts there is that respect of persons. Inside our heart there is that compromising spirit. But Elisha, just like Elijah, he said, go and tell him, no respect of persons here. The Lord has sent a message. Tell him to go to Jordan and wash seven times. He'll be all right. But in verse 11, Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord is God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper and not a banner and fapa, the rivers of Damascus better than all the waters of Israel may I not wash in them and be clean no Neman the power is not in the water the power is in the obedience of faith May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near to him and said, My father, if the prophet... Oh, you need to listen to me now. The servants of Naaman did not try to influence the servant of Elisha. So that the servants of Elisha will change Elisha. So that Elisha, after the servants of Naaman had spoken to, had convinced, had brainwashed, had counseled the servants of Elisha, then the servants of Elisha will put pressure on Elisha to change. No, it's Naaman that will change. Is a sinner that will change. Is a lukewarm fellow that will change. Is the people that are asking for help. They are the people that will change. I know. While I'm there counseling, I know sometimes the people that are waiting outside are many. And they are making trouble with my helpers. And sometimes the pressure is too much. On those who are helping me to arrange all those things. And they are wondering that this pastor, he doesn't understand. We are facing fire from all these people here. And they are even insulting us, abusing us. What are we going to do? 
I think we should find a way of influencing this Elisha, this uh, pastor, so that he will realize, so that if he can change a little, these people abusing us, insulting us, putting pressure on us, then he will be able to attend to them and will be free from trouble. No! Talk to them! I'm not the one to change. They are the people to change. They came for help. And so, they went to this name and they said, my father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldest thou not have done it? How much rather then, when he says to thee, wash and be clean, then went he down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to according don't change it according don't change the word according don't change the counseling according to the saying of a man of god and his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child and it was clean praise the lord i said praise the lord do you see mercy there mercy for the unqualified and, and when you get to the New Testament, it's mercy upon mercy upon mercy. Miracles of mercy. That woman came to the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is grievously tormented of the devil. And Jesus spoke not a word. And his disciples came to him and said, send her away because she cries after us. And she said, I'm not saved, but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And the woman persisted, persisted, and still came, knelt down. Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus looked on her and said, how can I take the children's bread and give it to dogs? Unworthy. And the woman said, truth, Lord. Mercy. But how many of you can endure that? If I said something that goes against your refined, civilized culture, how you will, you know, twist and stir up and, you know, you get angry. The woman was not angry. She was looking for something. When you are looking for something, you will not be angry. And then Jesus said, because she said, truth, Lord, but the dogs eat of the crumbs that fall from the master's table. And Jesus said, great is your faith. Be it unto you as thou wilt. And at that same very hour, the daughter was made whole. But it was the mercy of God. The miracles in the ministry of Elijah were miracles of mercy for unqualified people. The same fact is true. In the miracles that you find in Moses' ministry in the wilderness, mercy came to its height came to its climax in the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that as the Lord will endure you with power tonight, greater power. I say greater power. Yeah. When you go out there, miracles of mercy will be coming upon you in Jesus' name. Miracles of mercy. Miracles of mercy. First, it will come to you. The mercy of God will work wonders in your life. And then through you, you have the mercy of Christ in you. The compassion and the love of God in you. And as you go back home, everyone as you pray for them, even if they are not worthy, if they are not qualified, the miracles of mercy for unqualified people will pass through you and get to them in Jesus' name. We've studied about Elijah, how he preached, how he wrought miracles, and how he showed mercy. And I'm believing that tonight you want that same miracle power of God upon your life. And the fearless, bold, uncompromising preaching. I pray that every one of us here, the Lord will give you that fearlessness, that boldness to declare, thus says the Lord. Can you still pray? I said, can you still pray? Why don't you stand up and let's pray for some time. Let's pray for some time. Let the Lord give you the courage, the boldness to declare the word of God without fear and without favor. We need it. In these days, 
where preachers are dancing to the tune of the world. In these days, while preachers are preaching only what the people want to hear. In these days, when preachers are just bending down, bending low to the people, to the great people of the world, wanting them to come to their churches, and they are preaching only messages, sweet, sweet, sugar-coated messages, and they cannot talk against sin anymore. You pray that the Lord will give you the boldness and the fearlessness and the courage and the conviction to be able to declare the word of God as it ought to be declared. No fear, no favor. You know the message already. The message of repentance. Preach it boldly without fear, without partiality. The message of the demand of God on righteousness. Preach it without fear, without partiality. The message of holiness without which no man shall see the Lord, preach it without fear, without partiality. Uncompromising preachers of the world. Not changing message. That when you are here at the headquarters, you preach good, good message. Then when you go to your region, when you go to your locality, then you, pray, you preach watered down message. No. Preach it. The word of God. Anywhere, everywhere, whoever is there, whoever is not there. And then the miracle power of God will walk through you. When you preach the word, the way you ought to preach it. God's miracle power will work along with you. You'll pray for the sick. You'll pray for the oppressed. You'll pray for unqualified people. And the mercy of God, the compassion of God, the love of God, or the gifts of the Spirit will flow through you to them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I praise the Lord for you today. I know normally you ought to be tired. And I really appreciate the way you have endured until this time. And I pray that your endurance will not be in vain. I love you and Jesus loves you more. And everything you need, the Lord will give unto you you will succeed in ministry. You will not fail. The power of God will never fail in your life. And even though challenging situations may come your way, when you go back to your location, even though you may feel ordinary and you may feel weak, remember, while you are out there, I'll be praying for you while I'm here. You are not alone. God will never leave you. And I will not stop praying for you until you succeed. You will succeed. Why don't you raise up your hand? So we pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus. I thank you for all my brothers and all my sisters. Thank you for the fellowship here. Thank you, Lord, for the unity here. Thank you for the harmony here. Thank you, Lord, for the endurance of your people. Staying until this hour, oh Lord, I pray. This will not be in vain in their lives. In Jesus' name. Lord, nobody is sufficient for these things. Even this Elijah we spoke about, naturally, there were times he was even afraid. But when the Spirit came upon him, then he became so bold that we cannot even recognize him again. All this, my brothers, all this, my sisters, I pray, O oh Lord, the natural weakness that they have, take it away in Jesus' name. The supernatural boldness, courage, fearlessness that they need. Oh Lord, give it to them in Jesus' name. And the power of the Holy Ghost. And pray for all my brothers, all my sisters. Miracles will be wrought through them in Jesus' name. 
even people that have not been confident praying for the sick before. They have not been confident casting out devils before. They have not been confident manifesting the gifts of the Spirit before. From this very day, the power of the Lord will come upon you. The gifts of the Spirit will fill your life. And when you open your mouth, power, authority, anointing, breaking the yoke will come out in Jesus' name. You will succeed. The work of God will prosper in your hand. Where you failed before, God will forgive you. You will rise up in boldness, in authority. You will do your work for the Lord in Jesus' name. And sisters that are discouraged, I pray that all that discouragement, because of the disappointments and the failures of the past, I pray the spirit of the living God will comfort you. And will take the discouragement away from you. If it's your husband, your children bringing the discouragement, I pray God will touch them. That the people around you will be an encouragement to you in Jesus' name. And all my brothers there, ministers one way or the other, if there's anything bringing discouragement to your heart, that you are thinking, I don't think I can go on. I don't think I can do it. My brother, it happened to Elijah at a particular time like that. He felt he couldn't go on. He wanted to die, and God didn't want him to die. God wanted him to go up in a rapture. You will not die. You will not die. All those discouragements that you saw before you came here, that made you to want to give up and say, no way, I'm going back to my tailoring. I'm going back to my teaching. I'm going back to my profession. I'm going back to this. I'm going back to that. All things that brought discouragement in your heart, the fire of the Holy Ghost will come upon you, burn it away in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray every brother here, every sister here, give them your power, give them your authority, give them your anointing, give them your unction, that they will succeed. No man, no difficulty, no mountain will be able to stand before them in Jesus' name. You will sing the song of victory. When the saints are called up yonder, you will go marching over there. And you will have multitudes of converts that will tell you when you get to heaven, I got saved through you. I got sanctified through you. I was encouraged through you. I remained in the faith through you. Oh Lord, confirm the ministry of your children here tonight in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray they will never look back. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The church is marching on. The church is marching on the gates. Amen. Let me tell you a secret. If you want me to release you in time, sing. If you don't sing well, I'll bring another chorus, another chorus, until you wake up. Are you up? Yeah. You will never come down. Yeah. Are you up? Yeah. Are you up? Yeah. Nothing will ever bring you down again in Jesus' name. Yeah. The church is marching on. The church is marching on. Thank you, Lord. We are marching on. The church is marching on. The church is marching on. We are marching on. We are marching on. Oh, yes, the gates of 
We are marching on. We are marching on. Once again, I appreciate you so much. Thank you for your endurance. I pray that for the extra time you have spent, God's extra power yeah. will be upon your life. 